responsibly. Last month, Tampa lifted the Stanley Cup. Last week, Los Angeles NBA champions. And now, Tampa versus Los Angeles for sports supremacy, for world supremacy. It's the World Series. Speaking of world supremacy, the return of Stu Gatz. Hello. Did you just get out of the shower, Stu? <laughs> I did. I showered in a sink. I mean, geez. <laughs> Clayton Kershaw, Tyler Glass. Now game one for this 60-game season. Dodgers were first in wins, Tampa was second. Dodgers were first in team ERA, Tampa was third. Dodgers were first in team runs, Tampa was 12th. For this postseason, Mookie Betts first in web gems. Randy Arozarena first in offense. Cody Bellinger first in hurting his shoulder celebrating. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to try this again. Uh, right here. Psha, my shoulder hurts right here. Whoa. Not smart. Um, Ramona, you're in Los Angeles. You're going to start us out. You've waited for this World Series all, all postseason. Yeah. Who has the edge? How much pressure is L.A. feeling? And how much pressure is there on Kershaw tonight? Oh, man. Look, I want to stop watching Kershaw like this. This is how I watch Kershaw every time. It's <laughs> not going to stop anytime just, soon. <laughs> it, it, look. The, the the man has this October jinx or whatever you want to call it. It's a demon he's got to get past. And the, the thing that's hard with him is that he has been brilliant in October. 2017, game one of the World Series, he went seven innings, struck out 11 Astros. He was great. Yeah. He's done it before. And I actually think there's less pressure on him in a game one because – it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Like, if they were down 0-2 in the series and he's pitching game three like he was before, that's more pressure. But eh, game one, and it's he, he's done this before. Just get off to a good start. And I think the pressure really is on Dave Roberts to know when to get him out of the ball game. That's been what's been hard for Kershaw. He goes five innings. He looks good. He starts to lose it a little bit. And Dave, Dave Roberts always wants to leave him in there just a little bit too long. Frank Isola, you can view this from L.A.'s perspective or Tampa's. Uh, Who's got the edge? How much pressure is there on either of these teams? Well, it does seem like it's set up for the Dodgers to win. I mean, Kershaw only got one start in the NLCS, didn't pitch well, and they still advanced. You know, a lot of people consider him the best pitcher of his generation. Greg Maddox was the same way. He had a losing record in the playoffs, but he did win a World Series. So I think I still think uh, Kershaw has to get to that level. He's going to get two starts here. My concern would be Tampa's offense. Randy Rosarena, as you, as you mentioned, Tony, reminds me a lot of when Miguel Cabrera first came up. The guy hits everything, but the rest of Tampa Bay hit 183 in the NLCS, so their offense was shut down, and the Dodgers have the capability of doing the same thing. Kevin Blackstone? Yeah, absolutely right. Let me start with Kershaw. No pressure. Pressure is game seven. Pressure is game five. Pressure is maybe game four, yep. right? But it's not game okay. one. Right. Um, I would be more concerned if I were a Dodgers fan and they didn't start him. This is what he is supposed to do. Because then maybe you'd be asking yourselves questions. Is, is his back still bothering him? Are they, not, are they worried about the psychology of him in the postseason? They shouldn't be. And as far as the, the, the edge, I mean, you laid it out, Tony, with all those statistics about the Dodgers. I mean, we knew this coming in. And the problem that, that Tampa Bay has, as Frank just alluded to, is they're batting. They're batting 209 in the postseason. Um, and that's not good enough. What they're going to have to do is find a way to get on the base pass, maybe work some walks, which they were pretty good at doing, and manufacturing some runs. But against that pitching staff, difficult. You say 209 is not good enough. It was good enough to get here for Tampa. <laughs> here, yes, they right. were pushed to the max against New York and against Houston, but good enough to get Thank here. You. And now Stu Gatz. I mean, listen, it's the World Series. There are four to seven games left, Tony. Every game yes. is a pressure situation. <laughs> Kershaw got hurt in the NLCS. He had to go up against their fourth starter. Now he has to go up against the Rays' number one starter. And I believe there is so much pressure on the Dodgers and Kershaw in this series. They've been the best team in the sport for the last seven years, and they don't have a World Series championship to show for it. Kershaw needs to get him off to a good start because if he does it, Tony, I'm afraid the Dodger team will fold because they sit Simply cannot win with their best pitcher pitching the way he does in the postseason, and it gets worse as they move on in the World Series career ERA of 5.7, a full three points worse than, than he yeah, has in the regular yeah, no, that, All that's true, yet again, it's also 
a reason why they're here. L.A. got here being down 0-2 in the last series and being down while Kershaw couldn't get it done in his last start. Shelburne, you want to add something? Yeah, by the way, Clayton Kershaw's not their best pitcher anymore. That's Walker Bueller. Okay, Walker Bueller is their ace now. And I think the thing with Kershaw is, look, this is going to be how he's remembered until he finally wins. He's the best pitcher of his generation, and there's always going to be that asterisk. Is he? And I'm, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose points yeah. here. I already feel it. Oh, I'm going to mix yeah. sports metaphors. Is he going to do that John Elway thing, that Peyton Manning thing, where he finally wins one at the end of his career? Oh, okay. All right. Hold the, hold the phone know, here. What I do know, we think of mixing willingly. sports metaphors? Ah, uh, it's a bad situation <laughs> now for Ms. Ramona Shelburne. Real quick, though, I mean, you said the pressure's on Dave Roberts, Ramona. I want to ask you. What do you do in the sixth inning tonight? You know, that's been the witching hour of sorts. What do you do in, in, in the sixth inning if you're Dave Roberts? Yeah, I think you got to get him out of there faster because Kershaw always wants to stay in. He never wants to come out. And you could see it in that last game when he was pitching in the – he actually was pretty good through the first five yeah, innings. Was. And then he started – the and then he went over to Marcel Azuna, and he – who he'd already given up a home run to. He had the same exact plan to him. And, and Acuna gets on – Freddie Freeman gets a base hit. Azuna comes up. Dre Roberts, he was tr I, I know he was trying to do what Dusty Baker did with Zach Granke a couple of days earlier. Left him in there, mm. show some faith in the guy. No, save Kershaw. For all right, and save, save the rest for your 30 for 30 <laughs> podcast you're going to do on this, all right? We have a whole show to get to. And, and last thing, on Tampa. We had one panelist, Frank Isola, name one player for the Rays, and that was it for the entire panel. Name as many Rays as you can right now. I'll give you five seconds to get any points. Sting. Okay. Kiermaier. Blast 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 Only I saw the Longoria. Wait. You notice Stu Gods and Blackstone didn't say anything Thomas. the entire time? Isola's racking up the points. We're going to move on. All right, Stu, this is Miami. You're going to get the first crack at this. NFL news of the day, the Dolphins naming Tua Tagovailoa's starting quarterback. Did this surprise anybody? Those two passes Sunday were the first time we saw him in 11 months. Miami's 3-3, three and three, second place in the division. Fitzpatrick's been so good the last two weeks. So, Stu, after so much restraint, is Brian Flores making the right move for Tua when they come back from bye versus the Rams in two weeks? Tony, as someone that you pulled off the bench today, I am uniquely uh, qualified to answer way. this question for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bye week, it's so they, get, <laughs> they got plenty of practice time, so Tua will get plenty of reps uh, with their number one team. Here's what I think is at play here for Brian Flores and the Dolphins. First off, they have a very good foundation of a team. They have their own first-round pick. They have the Texans' first-round pick this year, so the future is bright for the Dolphins. With Tua, I think with what the Dolphins decided here was, hey, we're 3-3. Three and three. The Patriots have taken a step back. The Bills lost their 4-2. and two. We're 3-3. Three and three. The division is wide open, and Ryan Fitzpatrick can only do so much and only take you so far. And this is, hey, we're here. Let's go for it. Okay. Let's put the young kid in, and let's see if he has the potential, not just to get us to the playoffs, but perhaps make a run once we get to the playoffs. I also think this is at play, Tony. He has the injury. You want to see if he's healed. You want to see if he's healthy. And you want to see if he's good enough no. because the Texans' number one pick next year, the Dolphins might be able to turn that into Trevor Lawrence if they need to. Oh. Really? Okay, I didn't see you going there. Ramona's shaking point. her head no <laughs> while you're talking. So let's go to Ramona, no. and then I want to revisit what you just said, Stu. I okay. want to know that he's over the injury before you put him in the game. I, I don't need <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's yeah, not still, over you, the injury. You implied. Please don't put him in the game. <laughs> like, I mean, like, yeah, he but you want to play eight over. games to see if that thing's. Yeah, but you want them to play eight games. Get a Ooh. good amount of games in because you're going to have big decisions. Well, I to make think I think we can season. say they no, feel he's he over the injury over at this point. I think we have to we have to agree upon that. They're not they're not making a decision to just yeah. check him out. But Ramona, the the idea is that that three and three in the division, they're right yeah. in the race, and now they're changing up their rotation hey. here. What do you think of that, Momo? T Tony, do you remember the last time Tua Tagovailoa made his burst onto the scene and we first learned his name yeah, and we first learned who he game. was? National yeah. Championship game down at halftime and Nick Saban goes to this unheard of backup quarterback, well, unheard of to the rest of the nation, and he just absolutely comes out and throws bombs. I mean, I when you hear Chan Gailey talk about him, when you hear the coaches, talk, the rest of the staff talk about him, they think he is their franchise quarterback and they can't wait to get him on the field. I'm going to trust them. Mm -hmm. Frank Isola? 
You know, it's clearly not based on the results because it's, uh, Fitzpatrick has played well in their three and three. I think this was the plan all along. They were going to wait until the bye week, and no matter what happened, they, as long as he was healthy, they were going to throw him in there. I think that's what Brian Flores and the front office decided to do. Now, it's a risk, though. If, if I'm on the Dolphins, and let's face it, you know the way the NFL works. Guys are in the league for like two or three years. They're thinking, you know what, we're cruising right now. we got a chance to win the division. So there will be pressure now on Tua, maybe than there would have been at the start of the season if he starts at 0-0. Okay, I mean, he's a first-round pick. There was always going to be pressure on him. But the point you made... Yeah, but now he's expected to win them. Right, right. Because they are winning. Maybe this team is in, in place where they can win. They're a better team than anyone thought. Kevin Blackstone, what do you think of the move during this bye week, right before we get to the Rams in two weeks? Yeah, I have no problem with this is when you make this move to a number one draft pick and a guy with all of this star power and the performance that he's that he's shown in college. And let's face it, Ryan Fitzpatrick, we love him, but he is the NFL's human placeholder. I mean, this is what he does, but he's never (laughs) held the place of quarterback for someone this talented. And at three and three. You know, who knows? Maybe this team could have been four and two with Tua um, under quarter uh, b- behind center. Um, we, we know his talent level, and this is what he does. He plays in big games. He is made for big moments. Would not be concerned about his health. There's no way they're going to roll out this guy with all that talent and all that promise and all that they've invested in him if he's not All right, ready. Stu, I want to bring you back in here yeah. because you had us going one way, you had Please us going do. another way. We were all like, hey, what do you want from me? Please, go ahead. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you think the Cowboys <laughs> wish they had someone better than Andy Dalton backing up Dak Prescott? Like, we don't pay enough attention to this. I'm telling you, the Jets are going to flirt with taking Trevor Lawrence. They just took Sam Darnold a couple of years ago. What if Tua comes in? Someone answer this question. Tua comes in and plays eight lousy football games in, a, in 2020 where we judge the quarterbacks after three or four starts. Rookies don't get a full season. If he is not good. If he doesn't meet the potential that many Stu, people have Stu, for what him. are you doing? You don't think Stu. the Dolphins Stu, would Stu, why are we already thinking you about trading Tua? What you, why are you already I'm a visionary. He might not be he's already out. out. He's not even in. He's out. Stu, Stu. Oh, he hasn't even God, started. I asked you what you thought about them making the move to start him right now, not whether you, they should trade him away at the end of the season. What are you doing, man? You play eight bad football games. I'm trading you, and I'm taking Trevor Lawrence. Get out of here. Welcome back, Stu. I don't care if I leave Trevor Lawrence just, on the I mean, plane. You're a treasure. <laughs> An absolute treasure. All right. Coming up, we're going to break down last night's games in buy or sell. Maybe the Chiefs are becoming a running team. Maybe Stu's going to tell us that loss was good for the Bills. Maybe, maybe the Cowboys should start trading off players, too. Amari Cooper to Baltimore, <laughs> right? Wouldn't, wouldn't they want that? Sounds like Chris Russo. And... <laughs> Let's do it. Around the Horn is presented by Samuel Adams from Boston with Love. Save it. 26 passes. What do you think is the last time an Andy Reid team had a line like that? But that near fumble late fourth, if that ball comes out a millisecond earlier, maybe it's a different result. Ramona, champs still the champs? What did you see last night from KC? Look, you know, I, I thought Patrick Mahomes was really disciplined. He took what the defense gave him. But I, I know Buffalo was excited about this game. This was supposed to be their breakthrough game. I liked what they did defensively. I liked that defensive scheme. And if they get a little more from their offense, I, I think they're in it in that game. But they just, you know, like Josh Allen just didn't get it going. But I like that they dropped eight back and forced him and forced them to beat him with the run. Who got I mean, Tony, I've never been more positive that the Chiefs are the best team in the NFL than I was after last night. I know that sounds strange, but they won on the road in bad weather, and they did so with 265 yards rushing. I know Patrick Mahomes could throw the football. I know they could score points. I did not know they could average over five yards per carry, give you 265 yards rushing, and play defense like that against a team that is out. I was going to let it slide the first time. I think it was 245, uh, Stu, especially after some sacks. But it's all right. I hear what you're saying. Blackstone, how about you? No, I'm with Stu on that. You know, that defense was impressive. I mean, they held the Bills at, what, 206 yards for that entire game? So they can play defense. They can run the ball in bad weather if need be. And that's something you're going to have to do in Kansas City. That's a solid team every way around. And how about you, Frank? That fumble that CEH had late in the game, it wasn't a fumble. But if it was, Buffalo could win this game. Yeah. Yeah, there would have been 90 seconds left, and Mahomes would have driven them down the field, and they got the great field goal kicker, and Kansas City still would have won the okay. game. They run the ball, they're getting Le'Veon Bell, and they got the best quarterback. You know, I'll tell you what, for Buffalo, though, I watched them 
The way they played against Tennessee, the way that they played last night, they're a good team, but they're below those teams. You, you think that. that they're in okay. winnable. So, they're so that, that's your answer on Buffalo, and Ramona, you answered it well as well. Kevin, can I ask you to buy or sell Buffalo? Their first four games versus their last two games in Josh Allen's completion percentage coming back down to earth. I mean, they just they just lost to the world champions, and they lost to an undefeated team in, the, in Tennessee, which has a running back that we've never seen the likes of before. Um, they'll be fine. They're not at that level. Level, but they're the next level down. Do are you reassessing the Buffalo Bills? No, I mean, listen, the Bills are four and two in a division that's not very good. Josh Allen, last two games, hasn't been great. But the last 19 games, he's been one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. I think the Bills will be just fine. I think the Bills win that division and make the playoffs, Tony. We'll move on. Buy or sell three. The other game, Cowboys, Cardinals, Ezekiel Elliott blaming himself for last night's loss. Two fumbles and was benched. But there's enough blame to go around the whole horn of Jerry World. Starting with Elliot Stu, Tim Kalashaw wrote today, the Cowboys Whoa. never should have paid Ezekiel Elliott. Lost to Cardinals Ooh. provided more proof. Buy or sell Tim Kalashaw, Stu Gatz. Dang. I mean, I like that. Listen, I've always said, don't draft a running back early. Don't pay a running back a lot of money unless his name is Derrick Henry. That guy's good. You pay him a lot of money. But uh, I think it's a good point. Listen, he has five fumbles this year, Tony. That's not good. He's lost three of them, I believe. And in 2020, where offense is everything, you can't give up the football. Blackstone? Yeah. All of that is true, but let's not forget, this is the worst defense we are looking at in the NFL right now. Mike Nolan was a DC, um, DC back in the mid-1990s, late 1990s. That's like 25 <laughs> years ago almost now. This guy's playing Atari 260 to uh, 2600 while everybody else is playing Madden 21. Uh -huh. A 3-4 defense with a 4-3 talented defense? Come on, stop. Well, you're not wrong, Kevin. What did you say it was the worst defense in the league? No, it's the worst defense in 59 years! <laughs> Frank Isola, how about you? Yeah, he, Don't put him back he was on the, the field. DC of DC. Thankfully, Diet Coke wasn't his favorite drink. We'd be here all day. They have 15 giveaways, <laughs> and that's accounted for 84 points. How are the Cowboys going to win? Coaches talk about ball security all the time. That is big time on Ezekiel Elliott. That's Elmo? unacceptable. Look, I, I think it's on Zeke, and I like that he owned it. I like that he didn't say anything about getting replaced for a couple of carries. Um, that, that, that's the right messaging yeah. there. Um, but look, Buda Baker's good. That guy, that guy's a ball hawk. He was making plays all over the field. He was the only reason I kept watching that. You know, it's game. still possible. Non-competitive. By a computer simulation, that four wins would win the NFC East. No. I mean, yes, it is not no. likely. No. But, but I mean, they're still in first place. On the other side of the field, Cardinals got to win. They're four and two. They're looking at the playoffs right now, almost at the halfway point of the season. But did you see the completion percentage for Kyler Murray last night? 38% yeah. Frank Isola. What did you buy? What did you sell from Arizona? Listen, he's a great runner, and, you know, he played baseball, so nobody slides better than Kyler Murray. But that division is too <laughs> tough. Too tough. They're not going to be a playoff. Delburn? Look, you know, I, I had the Rams making us think out here in L.A. that they were, they were ready to take that division back. And then they went and lost to the 49ers. I don't know what's going on in the division. I, I okay, that's about the Rams. Stu Gatz, how about you? <laughs> the Cardinals are fine. And Tony, I want all my points back right now. The Cardinals are just fine. That thing that you mocked me for in that first segment, the Cardinals just did it with Josh Rosen and Kyler Murray. All my points back now! Incredible move from yeah. Stu Gatz! That was like a Jedi mind trick. <laughs> I wasn't picking up what you're putting down, but you're right. You're right. It's exactly Tony, you what. You don't have to do yes. what he says. No, but it's exactly what. They changed <laughs> coaches, though. It doesn't they matter. Those coaches. Are, that's it. It's over. I sold her. Done. They changed here. My trick hasn't been showdown, and this is Philip Rivers. I, I made the decision last week. I'm going to read. I'm going to read what they wrote, not to be motivation, not to anything. I just kind of want to see. You know what? I don't. I don't, I don't know you guys' pers personality stuff. Why? So I, I felt like all you guys are pretty dang honest. So a uh, Jedi mind trick of his own, Philip Rivers there, reading the press clippings of everybody ripping him and having a better game. Kevin, welcome to Showdown as well. How do you hear Rivers there, Stu? 
I love that because most athletes say they never listen to the criticism, don't listen to the media, and here you have Rivers, as he's getting older and not caring about anything anymore, saying, yeah, I read, I listened, and I played better. I love that. Of course. I'm right with you. I mean, there is a lot to be learned by reading sports writers and reading the newspaper and paying attention to this show. Look at the debate commission is apparently paying attention to this show and bringing the mute button to the president. You got it, Stone. You're absolutely right. That's, that's true. This week's debate is going to have the mute button. How great is that? Love 30 it. seconds of FaceTime, Mr. Kevin Blackstone. Thank you very much. Hey, let's go across the pond over to the EPL and give a shout out to the Newcastle supporters. Don't know if you saw this, but they've jacked the pay-per-view rates over there to watch a little soccer on the weekends. And the Newcastle supporters said, you know what, we're not down with that, but we're going to pool the money that we would pay per, but we give to pay-per-view and give it to the food bank over here and help the folks who are in need right now in this pandemic economy. Good for them, and I hear that it's starting to catch on with some other clubs over there. Support your fellow man and woman. That's a great thing. Great story. Come to Do my castle, house. Take huh? a watch it's it great there. Great story, Thank you for that. Listen, man. All right, that's going to do it for us on a 23 and a half hour break. Hey, Stu, don't be a stranger. But don't shower in a sink either. Happy Hour is presented by...